Good morning and welcome to worship here at St. James Lutheran Church. I am John Locke. I am the pastor of this wonderful congregation here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. We are delighted that you've decided to join uh, us for worship in this end of the summer almost, last Sunday of July. Today's lessons talk a lot about strength. Strength from relationship with God in the psalm. Paul's letter to the Romans that talks about the strength that comes through the Spirit, even though we are too weak to, uh, to, to move and handle things on our own. Strength that comes through God's kingdom in miraculous, small little ways to turn us into extraordinary people. These are extraordinary times, and in order to survive it, ordinary people will follow God's lead. Ordinary people will pray. Ordinary people will pray and sing and heal and share and invest and extraordinary things will happen. The church that we've known in the past may not be the same when COVID releases us from its grasp and we can return to worship in this place, but we will be the church. God makes us the church. So we will continue to be the church. It just may look different. So as we move forward and we're toward that, I am excited, I think. I'm excited to share with you that at Congregation Council meeting on, Sun, on Thursday evening of this week, a very long conversation was held about uh, rejoining again in uh, uh, in-person worship gathering for in-person worship here at St. James. We are gathering a team of people to consider logistics and worship planning and so forth. And the initial, the initial worship uh, for the first couple of months will be outdoors. We're not sure in August which Sunday that will be or which weekend it will be. And we don't know all the details and logistics yet. We know that there are dozens and dozens of things to consider. So keep uh, your eye out in your email and your text and your, uh, for newsletter information about what will be coming. Uh, again, there's, uh, council has made a commitment to develop a plan. We don't have a date yet. Um, the sooner we get the plan put together and the more we analyze and evaluate the numbers uh, of the medical uh, arena, then we'll make a, a decision in the next couple of weeks about when worship will be. But it is exciting to think about that and the possibilities that that holds, that we once again could gather for the incarnated body of Christ as the congregation of St. James here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Thank you for being with us. We are thrilled to be able to worship together even though we might not be able to be with each other physically, but we know that spiritually that God's Spirit is working and is engaging each of us to remember one another. Thanks for being here. see me frustrated but I'm looking for something in this flower mix and if I find it you're gonna be really surprised and it's gonna be a great gift for you yes indeed I just got to keep looking okay okay thank you for watching me while I while I go through this stuff hey pastor John. oh hi Baxter what are you doing well, I'm trying to find the yeast I'm okay. in the flower yeah so how is it looking so far making any no, progress not, not really no, no, I'm, I can't tell any difference between the yeast and the flour. And you're making quite a mess, if you don't mind me saying well, so. Yeah, 
I am making quite a bit of mess. I, ladies might be mad at me when I finish up if I don't clean things really good. Well, I'm not really sure. I was going to say that it might help me understand God better. Oh my goodness. Pastor John, I'm not sure if that's what Jesus meant. No. Uh, well, you see, there's this parable in the gospel lesson today that Jesus tells. And it's like there's several parables, and one of them is about a seed in a bush that grows, the bush grows up really big, and then there's one little parable that he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a, the yeast that a woman put into her flour. And so I figured if I can find the yeast that's in the flour, I can give some to the boys and girls, and then they'll have part of the kingdom of heaven. Well, Pastor John, Maybe we ought to read the parable again. Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like the yeast added to the flour. Jesus was using an analogy. Baxter, I know that yeast makes the bread taste differently. A lot of people think it makes it taste, it tastes better. And some people say it makes the bread bigger and fluffier and, and changes the way the dough looks. And, and so it must have some value, maybe at least in Jesus' day. It's like God is in the middle of everything. And when I can recognize where God is in places, then I could point it out to other people, couldn't I? And I'd let them know that's where God is and this is what God is trying to do with us and for us. And I could explain this to the boys and girls, couldn't I? Wow. Well, thanks, Baxter. Man. You're pretty smart about these things. Anytime. I didn't know better. I think you were a sheep that hung out with Jesus a lot. Yeah. You never know. Okay, well, okay, well, I better clean up okay. this mess. See you, boys okay. and girls. Bye. Bye, Baxter. Good luck with the mess. Wow. So, that Baxter came along just at the right time, didn't he? I was going to really make a huge mess here in a few minutes. So the kingdom of God is like something small and something plain and something sort of ordinary, but it's definitely something very, very important. And in the other parables that Jesus tells today, it's about things that are hidden. And people go to great lengths to buy a field or to dig up the dirt to find that special thing that they know is there. So I think Baxter taught us that, that God's Spirit can work with us uh, within the smallest little thing, a story or a friendship, a game, maybe even a vacation trip. Uh, maybe it's within people who love us and we can love them back. Maybe it's even right here inside of us, you think? Yeah. And when that happens, we, we realize that God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, is right here around us and right inside us. Wow, what a difference that's going to make. That's going to make such a difference of the ordinary things and makes them different and special and unique and extraordinary. And that's a marvelous, wonderful gift to us, boys and girls. The kingdom of God can be anywhere and everywhere. Even in the mess that I've made, I guess I better clean it up. I don't think Baxter's going to come back to help me. It's great talking to you today, boys and girls. Have a good day. May we begin our worship today with a word of confession and hearing God's awesome words of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. 
We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join together as we pray together the prayer of the day. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading, 1 Kings 3, verses 5 through 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, what, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, Will you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king in my place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant therefore an understanding mind to govern your people able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? And it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I will give you a wise and discerning mind like no one, 
like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. Here ends the reading. Psalm 119, verses 129 through 136. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word is opened, it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as you always do to those who love your name. Order my footsteps in your word, and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your teaching. Second reading, Romans 8. 26 through 39. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus, who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors, though, through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to the Gospel of Matthew in the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it all, was, all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. 
When it was full, they drew it ashore. They sat down and put the good into the baskets, but they threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. So the owner of the household says, go in to the treasure. Go into the storehouse and bring out of the treasure what is new and what is old. And he's going to start sorting through what will have value with the new things that are happening. What will ha continue to drag us down that we've done in the past. As I said in my introduction, the church has changed now. I'm not the only one. I'm not a prophet. I'm preaching here for what I've heard many other people say. By the time we're able to regather without any restrictions, nobody knows that. It's an unknown date in the future. And between now and then, things continue to change. Vaccines being worked on, different types of treatments, different types of care, people doing things differently in how they approach their lives, trying to stay safe and keep other people safe. It's exciting to think about the possibility of having outdoor worship and us having a gathering of real people around. Trust me, it excites me because I'm tired of looking at this inanimate red light in front of me. But you know, it won't be like we used to worship. There will be a lot of changes. There will be restrictions. There will be restrictions in the numbers of people and where we can sit and what we can say and what we can sing and how we can interact and all so many different changes to keep one another safe. Because while it may be exciting, it is also fraught with risk. And we want to proceed safely. We have children who thought, parents and children and educators and administrators who thought a few weeks ago they might be back in the classroom in a few weeks. Not to be. At least not for the first nine weeks. Because it isn't the safest thing to do. It is not an easy task. And parents... Children, administrators, teachers, know that we pray for you. Know that these are difficult times and you are constantly in our prayers and our thoughts for strength and wisdom and perseverance. These are not easy times. I know that most of us are probably getting tired of saying that and hearing that and witnessing that. And we just want to know what to do. What can we do about it? What can we do? Sometimes there's not as much to do as there is as much to be. In Paul's lesson, in the, in the second lesson in Paul's letter to the Romans, he's writing to the Romans about this changing world. About people excited that the possibility of Jesus might be coming back soon. And in the midst of this changing world where the Roman government is getting stronger and stronger and Jerusalem is getting weaker and weaker and the thought and the possibility of destruction of Jerusalem is just around the corner. Paul says this world is groaning to give birth to something new. To give birth to something that gives possibilities and hope. And then he says something about prayer. The Holy Spirit comes among us and prays and intercedes for us in our prayers with sighs too deep for words. Have you ever been to that spot? You sat down on the pew, 
He came up to the altar rail and he knelt. You pulled the car over to the side of the road with tears coming down your face. And you may not even know why. And there's a groaning inside you. And you want to say the words to Jesus. You want to say the words to God. You want to say the words that will bring God's power and spirit upon us for healing. And they just won't come. Nothing seems to be adequate to describe the situation or describe our yearning. And in those moments, the spirit comes among us and says, child, oh, my dear child. I will pray with you. I will pray for you. I will intercede with the Son and the Father to express your deepest, most desires and hurts. And in those moments, in those moments, those little things that Jesus talks about, the kingdom of God, the miracles of the yeast and the flower and the seed that grows to be a bush, can capture us, is planted within us and begins to grow. And the Spirit says, I know, I know that God loves you. You are loved from the beginning of time. You are loved in the midst of your, your distraught, of your fear, of your anxiety. And you will be loved with that same enormous unbelievable, unfathomable love tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. No matter how many times we groan. Prayer. In another place in the scriptures, Paul says, pray without ceasing. Everything of our life being part of a prayer. So I thought we would close this sermon with a song. I'm asking for forgiveness from a dear, dear friend of mine uh, named, uh, he's Reverend Michael Collins from Lincolnton, North Carolina, and he's written a song called Pray. We've sung it at Camp Formation the last few summers, and it is, um, I also have to ask him for forgiveness because I'm changing some of the words to make it more contemporary with where we are today. us to pray, O oh Lord, each and every day, with our hands clasped or folded, with our hands in the air, with our eyes closed tightly in a downward stare, with our eyes wide open, with a smile to share, just remember. You can pray anywhere. Pray anywhere. Hearing news of COVID, remembering where we've been. Shaking hands for 20 and our face behind the mask. Six feet of safety and trying not to fear, but just remember, you can pray anywhere. Pray anywhere, singing in the church pew, reclining on your bed. YouTube with the preacher, FaceTime with Uncle Fred, worrying about tomorrow, living life without a care. So just remember, you can pray anywhere. in Portland, 
baseball on TV, binging on Netflix, afraid we'll go insane. We can't be quiet, we have a voice to share and remember. You can pray anywhere. Pray anywhere. Pray anywhere. Oh Lord, teach us to pray. Each and every day. us to pray. Amen. I invite you to join as we confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in In Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United together in Christ, we pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you come to us through the Holy Spirit to teach us how to pray, to offer to us the strength to know that we are not alone, that while we fear, we do not need to be afraid. While we may tremble and have anxiety, we do not need to be afraid. We know, O God, that you love us. You adopt us through the waters of baptism. You join us to you in faith and promise to never, ever forsake us or leave us. You promise to make us into and fashion us into someone that is like you. We have a long ways to go, O God. Continue to walk with us and strengthen us as we walk through these uncertain and difficult and challenging days. Give us wisdom to make decisions. Give us courage to move forward, to try new possibilities and new options. Give us the knowledge we need to stay safe and to help others be safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful Father, we come before you to remember the leaders of the church, Bishop Elizabeth, Bishop Tim, newly elected Bishop Jenny in South Carolina. We ask for your grace upon them, offer them strength and renewal, wisdom and guidance. We ask for your hand of mercy and strength to be upon the sister congregations in our community. Evans Memorial, First Baptist, Haymount and Hay Street Methodist, Highland Presbyterian, Westminster Presbyterian, and so many others with whom we have had joyous interactions in the past. Strengthen them for the days to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these petitions, O God, we ask in your name. In the name of Jesus, the Christ, the Redeemer, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
receive the blessing. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Thank you for being with us in this worship time. May God grant you riches and understanding and good health. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.